thousand. So the really good part about this is that we've already solved one step addition and subtraction equations. And so solving one step addition and subtraction inequalities is really not that different. Okay, so we're going to um, apply everything we've already learned about inverse operations. And in, um, if we were solving an equation, you know that I would say a plus 7 equals negative 2. You know that you need to solve it using inverse operations. You would hopefully show your work by doing that. And you would say that a had to equal negative 9. A has to be negative 9. It can't be any other number than negative 9. Meaning when I go up here and put negative 9 in for A and add 7 to it, I get negative 2. That's how it checks. If I were to ask you to graph your solution for an equation, it would be a pretty simple graph, wouldn't it? It would be like literally at negative 9, that's all it can be. It can't be any number to the left of it. It can't be any number to the right of it. It's just a point. Right? One answer. Versus solving a one step inequality. If I just took that a plus 7 and made it less than or equal to negative 2, the good news is the process and how you solve it is the same. The only difference is your solution set is going to look pretty different. So I'm still going to show my work this way. I'm still going to get that negative 9 except instead of it needing to equal negative 9, it can be negative 9 or anything less than it. So if I were to say, give me a number that would, that would actually fit in the solution set, some people are easily able to give me an answer by just looking at the inequality. Other people need to look at the graph. So let's look at our graph. Where is 0? Somewhere over here. What number is to the right? You're going to have to do this today because the graphs I give you will be blank. And then I'm going to say it can be negative 9, so I'm going to color it in. And now they look the same, but they're not. I have to show where can it be less than. And as long as the variable's on the left, this tells you the direction to shade. So the numbers that are less than negative 9 are to the left. How would we check this? I would pick a number somewhere in this solution set, I'd plug it in for A, and I'd see if it's true. So how about negative 11? Is negative 11 in our solution set? Yeah, so when I put negative 11 right here, I get negative 11 plus 7. Is that less than or equal to negative 2? Is negative 4 less than or equal to negative 2? Sure is. So negative 11 is a solution. What if I tried um, negative 3? Would that be true? No, because it's not in the solution. It wouldn't be true, okay? So that's really going to be the main difference. So now all I really kind of need to do is just refresh your memory a little bit. So be careful when you're given equations that look like this. Okay? <clears throat> 7 is less than x plus 13 and a half, or 13.5. So I'm going to solve it by doing the inverse, and I'm going to subtract it. Now be careful. Anytime you have negatives with the 0.5s, it's, it, it's not quite exactly what you think. So if I'm at negative 13.5 and I on a number line, and I add 7 spaces to it, where would I land? Negative 6.5. Yeah, be careful with that. Or guess what? Just use calculator. Um, so I get an answer that says negative 6.5 is less than x, but that really means that x is greater than negative 6.5. It took all of about a half a second for me to write that. For those of you who have a tendency to rush through things, you're going to see a less than symbol. And you're not going to look to see where the variable's at. I'm telling you this because it's been happening for 16 years since I've been teaching this. You're going to make, you're going to shade it to the left, even though I'm telling you not to. So put your negative 6.5. That means zero somewhere over here. Negative 6.5 is in between negative 6 and negative 7 on a number line. It has to be greater than... 6.5. It can't be. So I'm not going to color this one in and I'm going to shade to the right. Are you with me? 
I haven't done anything crazy or out of the ordinary, right? So that's what your addition one step looks like. And a subtraction is pretty much the exact same way, okay? So let's take a look at what a subtraction equation would look like. That would be me taking A and subtracting a half and having it be greater than 7. So then obviously I would just use the addition property of equality to cancel that out. A is going to be greater than or equal to 7 and a half. You could make it a decimal if you'd like. And then this is what I'm looking to graph. So let me make sure I understand what we did today. Yesterday, I came right out and I gave you the inequality. That's what you graphed. Today, I'm not going to give you the inequality as the answer. I'm going to give you it to solve. You need to solve it and then graph it. So it's literally the same exact ideas as yesterday with one little step ahead of it. You following me? So if this is 7 and a half, 0 is over here. 7 is to the left of it, 8 is to the right of it, it has to be greater than 7 and a half, it can't actually be 7 and a half, it's got to go this way. Okay, I'm going fast because this should be like a quick type of review. Alright, are you good with one and two step addition and subtraction? Because the next part of the notes is going to ask you to take your verbal statements and turn, you're going to take these verbals, like a sentence, you're going to turn it into a problem, you're going to take that problem and solve it, then you're going to graph it. And here's what's kind of cool, we did this already for standard one and standard two. Do you remember me saying, hey, I want you to write an expression for the sum of a number in x, or a number x, sorry, and 12. Okay, how would you write the sum of a number x and 12? We know hopefully sum means addition. So you would write x plus 12. That was test one. Test two said, okay, take that, and now I'm going to add this. Is no more than negative 30. Now it's standard two. So a sum of a number x and 12 what symbol means, hey, it can't be more than that. If it can't be more than that, it has to be less than that. Can it be that? Yes, it just can't be more than that. So we're using that symbol. Agreed? Okay, so this was test one. This was test two. And do you remember in test two, you just had to set it up. I didn't make you solve it. Test five, now solve it. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 12, subtract 12, so the x solutions can be any number less than or equal to negative 42, and then you know the drill from there. Okay, so the number just to the right of this is negative 41, it has to be less than or equal to, alright, piece of cake so far? Alright. Good, because it should be. All right. The uh, this is going to be one of the verbal sentences that, that gets you thinking a little bit, though. Every year this happens, and, I, and it's understandable. So if you see, and I guess let me ask you this, do you think there's a difference between 13 less than and 13 is less than? Hmm? 13 less than and 13 is less than. That one little word, is, is a game changer. Well, what is is? Go ahead, Savannah. Um, well, 13 less than is minus 13. Yes. So what she said, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but she said exactly what I wanted her to say. She said, I remember you saying that 13 less than means I am taking 13 less than something. So I'm subtracting 13 from something. That's what 13 less than means, 100%. But 13 is less than means... Hi, everybody. Sorry for the interruption. Can Gabrielle Rock said, please come to the office immediately. Thank you. 
Uh-oh. All right. That one little is, that one little is says, oh, is usually represents an equal sign, doesn't it? So I want you to say on that B or Q word, oh, that means instead of that equal sign, it's going to be one of those. Because I've had kids combine them, mix them up. I've had kids use them both. This, they use this for both, but it's not. So if I were to give you this statement, could you write it? Five less than X is less than 10. Negative 10, whatever. So you see two less than. So how would I write five less than X is less than negative 10? I see the is. So take it one step at a time. How would I write five less than X? She? Good, X minus five and then? Great, is less than negative 10, okay? So I really just wanted you to kind of be aware of that because that does happen and it, and it does get a little confusing. So here, x needs to be less than negative 5, it can be negative 4, negative 3, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to graph them anymore just to save some time. So are you good with that? Okay, so we're moving on to application problems, which I feel like, the more, are you agreeing that the more we're doing these word problems, the easier they're getting? Yep. The bell work is helping. Um, they're not as scary and intimidating as they used to be, right? All right, so this is, uh, we're going to do application problems Fortnite style. So, your goal for the end of the year is by the end of the year, you want to have at least, 50 solo wins. Hey, my nine-year-old has like 25, which actually is probably a testament to my poor parenting, but that's okay. So your goal by the end of this school year is to have 50 solo wins, not squads, not duos, solo wins, okay? Right now, you have 12. Okay. That's still more than I know. Okay. Hey, guess what? As soon as I write all that information, I know some of you already did some math in your head, didn't you? What math did you do in your head? You went, oh, so I only need 38 more to reach my goal, right? Probably. All right. So pause for a second because now I'm going to write a sentence that you're going to read a million times. Write and fill in any quality that represent the situation. Okay. So I'm asking you to write and solve. There's a difference between that. Solve just means give me an answer. Write means write the equation that's going to give me the answer you're telling me. Write and solve an inequality to represent the possible wins that you can get, sorry, it's not a rating, and reach your goal, okay? Because in this particular case, if you want to get at least 50, can you get more than 50? Sure, you just want, that's the minimum you want. So is there only one answer here? No, there's an infinite number of answers. You can get 5,000 wins if you can. You can get and still reach your goal. Okay, so let's write this down one step at a time. You know you need to get 50. As soon as I read at least 50, it's kind of like the budget problem. I know that I want to have that right there, right? Okay, so if I'm doing a verbal model, basically what I'm saying is, okay, well, I subtracted 50 for, and 12 to get 38. So if I subtracted to get my answer, then I know I need to have it be what type of a problem? Addition. So what am I going to do? I'm going to add the number of wins that I need still to the number of wins that I already have. And I want these two together to be greater than or equal to 50. Because this is your goal. Okay? So let's fill in what we know. How many more wins do we need? Well, we know it's 38 right now, but we don't want to put that in the equation. We want to put, because that's what we're solving for. But I know I already have 12, and when I add those two together, that's what I want. And then you know what you do from here. 
So the total number of wins, as long as you get 38 or more wins by the end of the year, you will have met your goal. Can you get 50? Can you get 800? Sure. Can you get 37 and meet your goal? No. You will be one sad, sad game and win away from meeting your goal. How long will that be? All right? So, do you understand that addition application problem? Because I have one more to show you. All right, so let's stick with the Xbox theme here. So, my son just had his birthday. He got lots of Xbox Microsoft cards, gift cards for his birthday. He got two $15 ones and a um, $25 one. So, he got a total of $55 in gift cards. He wants to buy some more V-Bucks. Oh boy. Because he wants that, all these stupid skins and these shark and the, whatever they appear. Yes, yeah, Skull Trooper. He wants more V-Bucks. Is it KS or CS? You're, you're welcome to me. Okay. <laughs> all right. He has $80 in cash. So he's got $80 in his own cash. Don't do this. Plus 55 on his Xbox gift cards. What's the total amount of, of V Bucks, or I know you have to buy Microsoft money before you get, that he can buy, that he could spend? So, what is the total, not just his money, his money plus the, the total possible? Because it's always got to be possible because it's, you can always do it, but you don't have to. Total possible amounts of money he can spend. And by total, I mean with his gift cards and his cash together. Okay? So what you're thinking is, well, if he spends, if he chooses to spend all of his 80 bucks, I know he wants to spend, um, oh, hold on. He wants to spend no more. This is a huge part of this. He wants to spend no more than 80. Okay? He might have 200, but he says, I'm going to take 80 bucks and that's all I'm going to spend. I'm going to save the rest for something else. So he wants to spend no more than his than $80. Okay? One second, Savannah. $80 in cash? In cash. Yep. So he's got 55 in gift cards, 80 in cash that he wants to spend. That's no more than that. So what's the total amount he could spend then? If he spends all of his 80 and the 55, he can buy $135 worth, right? Agreed? So what do I do with those two numbers to get my answer? So what type of problem did it start out as? Subtraction. So here's what I'm doing. This is the total possible amount of money that he can put in, the, in Microsoft. But from that, he's going to subtract the gift cards. And that has to be what? No more than. What symbol is no more than? Yes. So he wants to spend no more than that. Okay? Which means when I add 55 here and I add 55 here, then the total possible um, amounts that he can get, he can't look at anything over $135. Okay? Maybe this example would have made more sense if it was a sporting goods store and you were looking to buy you know, some new equipment or something. But so this is as much as he could spend because he's going to spend all his, um, all his Xbox gift cards and his that there. So then on a number line, obviously, you know what to do from there. Okay? That's application right. problems for one and for one step, addition, subtraction. Notice I didn't even show you multiplication and division yet. That's two step, one step because that something tricky happens with that. Um,